Gene, I, I, I forgave you. I did. You're a rude son of a bitch, but I forgave you. Because I completely fucked up your moment in history. And I'm sorry. That's the way it is. Kubrick was considered a maverick, a renegade. He'd left America and he'd left Hollywood. He shot one movie in Hollywood and he hated it so much and he hated Kirk Douglas so much. And so, and he took, tried to take his name off Spartacus. Now I think Spartacus is actually a very fine epic movie. You know, there's nothing wrong. Stanley hated it and he didn't even consider it one of his movies. Because he had, you know, he had to take orders from Kurt, you know, and, and he hated that. But um, anyway, um, so Hollywood was a strange, had a strange relationship with Kubrick. Uh, they weren't very fond of him. They never gave him an Oscar for Best Director, which is, of course, just shows you how really um, serious the Academy Awards are. <laughs> And by the way, you can add to that list another great director, Alfred Hitchcock. Well, I figured this crowd would know who Alfred Hitchcock was. One of the greatest suspense directors that ever lived, and, and literally, he took that particular genre of movie, Millennium Jumps, and he was never, ever uh, awarded by an Oscar. I think he got an, an honorary one at the end of his life, which was really meaningless, but um, it wasn't really one for a movie. So, anyway, just a passing footnote. A any other questions? Did I, I've given you a taste of what Stanley was about. <laughs> he was also nuts, you know, he was also crazy. For instance, when we were working on vacation, you never wanted to get behind Stanley Kubrick in the car, you know, on these tiny English roads, because he drove at 15 miles an hour. And sometimes he had a crash helmet on in his Mercedes. You think I'm joking? I'm not. I gave him a ride once in my MG, a little sports car, with his daughter Vivian, who was about 11 or something. She was crammed in the back. And I just, I thought I, you know, just go, not that fast, but I mean, quick enough. He was shitting himself. <laughs> and you know, I was just this young actor and I thought, I have some power. <laughs> Over the director. <laughs> was totally freaked out. But that was fun. Anyway, there you are, there's Dan. Yes. In the Ludovico treatment, yes. Ah, glad you asked. <laughs> These lid locks are used in delicate eye operations. Now, normally, the patient is lying flat on his or her back. Now, I was sitting up watching movies. Now, um, did it hurt at the time? No, because my eyes were anesthetized. And we had the guy that you, there is in this doctor who's in the film is actually a doctor from Moorfields Eye Hospital. So that, um, you know, that he had to put in these um, artificial tears into my eyes every 10 or 12, whatever it is, seconds. Because if you don't keep the eye moist, the cornea dries up and you are rendered sightless, blind, blind. So when Stanley showed me a picture of a patient with these lid locks, I, I looked at it and went, oh, that's nice. And he went, yeah, but, uh, you know. I went, what? He goes, yeah, you're going to wear those. I went, no way. Said, what? I can't wear those. He said, no, I have a doctor. He's going to talk to you and, and tell you that it's perfectly safe. I went, 
would you do it? Silence. <laughs> Never answered me. Anyway, the doctor did assure me that no problem. So this doctor, when we came to do the shoot, you know, he was um, you know, a very nice guy, I, I, but he wasn't an actor, and uh, he was very nervous about being in a Stanley Kubrick film. And I kept, you know, I was in a straitjacket, I couldn't really move much, and, um, you know, um, and then Stanley came down and said, Doc, um, why don't you say, you know, say something to Malcolm, like, um, how are you feeling, little Alex? And he went, oh, oh, okay, okay, thanks. Then Stanley left, right? He went to the back of the room. And then the guy turns to me, he goes, what's your name again? I'm going, Doc, don't worry about the line. Just don't even worry. Just make sure you get the drops in every 10 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> because I don't want to be blind, you know, for my heart. So he's going, well, you, what's your, I said, Alex, how are you feeling today, little Alex? I mean, who cares? It doesn't matter. It's meaningless. It's not Shakespeare. You're not going to win the Academy Award for this performance. <laughs> but I don't want to go blind. Just keep it going in. So he was going, you know, doing it. And then I was counting off. And I was like, mm, 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 you know. Like, get him in, Doc, get him in. Anyway, luckily, everything was fine. But on the way home, when the anesthetic wore off, yes. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> it was like somebody had a razor blade and had taken it down my body like that and cut into me. It was actually the most painful thing I've ever been through in my life. My doctor, thank God, he lived around the corner, came and gave me a shot of morphine. <laughs> Have you ever tried morphine? <laughs> He said, count to ten, I got to three. <laughs> One, two, oh. <laughs> yes, anyway. Any, yes? How long did, were you working on the clock for? Uh, how long? Um, well, the shoot was, I think, seven months, and I was working at least uh, six months beforehand on the pre-production, doing the figuring out what, you know, the costumes were going to be and the this, the that, that, and just hanging over at Stanley's and kind of working with other casts and that kind of stuff. So, probably a year, over a year, I think. Yeah, a long, a, a long time, really. But it went the like... Quality, the quality paid off. Yes, the quality, yeah. Well, that's Stanley Kubrick.